It was 55 years ago that Charlton Heston famously donned the old tunic to play Moses in the Ten Commandments. Once again, Hollywood will revisit the life of Moses, this time with Steven Spielberg at the helm. Spielberg is in official talks with Warner Brothers to direct the spectacle film. Incidentally, Warner Brothers inked a deal with Mel Gibson earlier this year to produce a biopic of Jewish warrior Judah Maccabee. Gods and Kings, as the project is presently titled, will cover the entire breadth of Moses' existence from birth to death, including the Jewish emancipation from Egypt, the burning bush, the receiving of the Ten Commandments. The biopic was written by Michael Green and Stuart Hazeldean and will be produced by Dan Lim and Mati Lashem. After being out of the spotlight for a couple of years, Spielberg has two high-profile pictures slated to open next month. The first one, The Adventures of Tintin, opening December 21st, and War Horse, opening December 25th. Presently, Mr. Spielberg is busy at work on the biopic of Abraham Lincoln, starring the venerable Daniel Day-Lewis. Lincoln is scheduled to release in December 2012. Dozens of Israeli women stripped off their clothes Saturday in a show of solidarity with a 20-year-old Egyptian blogger who caused a stir in the Arab world last week when she posted a naked photo of herself in protest against the limits of free expression in her country. Touched by the spirited protest measure, some 40 Israelis posed for a nude group shot in support of the Egyptian activist Aliyah Magda El Mahadi, who received threats and harsh criticism for her actions. Unlike El Mahadi, however, the Israeli women did not fully display their intimate parts for the camera. The brains behind the operation is Or Tepler, a 28-year-old who opened a Facebook event inviting women to, quote, show support in a nonviolent and legitimate way for a woman who is just like us, young, ambitious, full of dreams, and evidently has a developed sense of humor. More than 100 women said they would attend. The participants were photographed holding a sign saying, Love Without Limits and Homage to Aliyah Al-Mahadi, Sisters in Israel. Israel Fashion Week opens Sunday night at the residence of Italian Ambassador with a cocktail reception honoring Italian designer Roberto Cavalli. The week's activities will begin Monday morning at Tel Aviv's Hatachana Old Railway Station and will feature a display of fashion designer Yaniv Percy. Thereafter, events will continue for three days and feature 18 fashion exhibitions. During the Fashion Week, summer 2012 collections put together by Israeli designers such as Sasson Kedem, Mira Zwilliger, Zwillinger, Doreen Frankfurt, Galit Levy, Gideon Oberson, Shai Shalom, and Alon Levine will be on display along with fashion works rendered by students from the Shankar Fashion School. Also during Fashion Week, Roberta Cavalli will display his summer 2012 collection and there will be a competition between young fashion designers. Fashion Week will close with a fundraising event for IGY, the Israel Gay Youth Organization. Some 40 Israeli celebrities will model clothes designed by local designers at this event. Notable part- Participants will include Tal Berman, Donna International, Donna Spector, Michal Amdursky, and Dahlia Mazur. Visiting notables who will arrive during the week include Milan fashion celebrity Mario Boselli, Paula Reed, editor of the British Grazia fashion magazine, Lisa Armstrong, fashion journalist from the British Daily Telegraph, and also journalists and fashion figures from Russia, Japan, and the United States. Israel Fashion Week is supported in part by the Ministry of Tourism, the Foreign Ministry, and businessman and fashion entrepreneur Ophir Levy. Ali Hurwitz, the former CEO of pharmaceutical giant Teva, died of cancer Monday night at the age of 89. He was survived by his wife Dahlia, three children, and nine grandchildren. He was hospitalized in serious condition at the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Shomer last week. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement mourning Hurwitz as one of the greatest Israeli industrialists. Hurwitz, born in Jerusalem, stepped down from the helm at Teva when he was 70 years old and became the chairman of the company's board. In the 1980s, he headed the Manufacturer Association of Israel and for a while chaired the board of directors at Bank Lumi. In 1976, Hurwitz was appointed CEO of Teva and in the same year won the industry's award for his achievements in chemistry. In 2001, he received the Israel Prize for Lifetime Achievements. Recent archaeological excavations in Jerusalem show that, contrary to popular understanding, King Herod was not solely responsible for constructing the Western Wall. 
Israel's Antiquities Authority announced Wednesday that the discovery of a mikvah, a Jewish ritual bath, alongside Jerusalem's ancient drainage channel, challenges the conventional archaeological perception that Herod built the wall in its entirety, saying it is now evident that construction was completed at least 20 years after Herod's death, believed to be in 4 BCE. The excavations directed by IAA archaeologist Ali Shukran, with assistance from Professor Ronnie Reich of the University of Haifa, revealed three clay oil lamps of a type that was common in the first century CE, as well as 17 identifiable bronze coins. The clay oil lamps and bronze coins were found when archaeologists sifted through soil removed from inside the sealed mikvah. According to Dr. Donald Ariel, curator of the IAA numismatic collection, the latest four coins were struck by the Roman procurator of Judea, Valerius Gratus, sometime around 17 or 18 CE, about 20 years after Herod's death. In a breakthrough development, the Israeli company Vaxel Biotherapeutics has formulated a therapeutic cancer vaccine, now in clinical trials at Hadassah University Medical Center in Jerusalem. If all goes well, the vaccine could be available about six years down the road to administer on a regular basis not only to help treat cancer, but in order to help the disease from recurring. The vaccine is being tested against a type of blood cancer called multiple myeloma. If the substance works as hoped, and it looks like the arrows are pointing that way, its platform technology, VaxHit, could be applied to 90% of all known cancers, including prostate and breast cancer, solid and non-solid tumors.